We did a ten teamer last week. We're gonna do a, an, another ten teamer. Okay. Yeah, because we uh, did a twelve team at some point. Well, we did do a twelve team the first week, but that was when we went like two hundred forty something picks deep. Yeah. So, uh, and when we have the time and we're not on somewhat of a time constraint, then we do twelve because I prefer twelve over ten. It's a better league, in my opinion. But uh, you know, ten teams, you know, is fine for what we're doing here today. And when we gotta, you know, hustle a little bit on the back end. But uh, draft kicking off in ten seconds. Somebody named Trade Austin Matthews can have the first pick, and then it'll be a few picks before me. And then Ant goes eight. And then let's see here as we get the whole screen up. And then this time, maybe I'll remember to shut that off on week. And then Aiden's awesome team going last. So here we interesting, go. Interesting that uh, Connor McDavid, and it didn't matter. He was ranked fourth. Yeah, the, like the, the rankings are wacky at this time of the year. Now, I'm on the clock here at pick six. Um, this is not a league where hits matter in this format. So otherwise, I would jump on uh, Brady Truck. I don't understand how Leon Dreisaitl is still available here at this spot so it's really a no-brainer especially in a contract year right uh-huh we've talked about that yep so there we go so uh ant's on the clock now and he's got a pick to make here i know what i would do if i was him but we will see all right he goes roman yossi he's gonna get his blue line showed up early remember in this format of espn which hopefully we we're thankful for espn mock fantasy dress but we hope to be away from you soon and something where the rankings are a little more accurate and the foot and the you know interface a little more screen friendly. Five defensemen here we pick, or we have to start. So certainly not a bad way to go with Roman Yossi there to get your top defenseman uh, locked up. Yeah. Get the first defenseman out of the way. And uh ooh, the Kale McCarr on the way back. I feel like that one hurts Chris a little bit. Aiden's been watching, hasn't he? Ah. He, and Chris gets Aiden's, to freeze off. Aiden's been watching, haven't you? He sure oh, has. Oh man, he's I'm smart. Getting... He has. He has. He has. Well done, Aiden. Oh man, absolutely foiled it there. Uh... So he has a good, he has a good end cap. We'll call it with uh, on the turn. Kale McCarr, Elias Pettersson, uh, and now Chris back on the clock here. See who he grabs here with his second overall pick. And that's you know that's a guy I probably would have taken if uh, he made it back to me. You know everything we talked about with Toronto. William Nylander is definitely a guy that will continue to produce as long as he stays healthy. 40-goal season last year. Tough to not take him. That really foiled everything. I'm sorry you didn't get Makar, and that you had to make a pick you didn't want to make, but I still think you made an okay pick with William Nylander. You got two strong forwards out of the gate. Not the way you want to build your team, but yeah, you could have done worse. And because I know that Chris is very defense-oriented uh, at the top, I had to get one of them because I knew that one would not return on the way back. You guys as are learning. As, That's good. As much as I wanted to grab a defenseman there, Brady Kachuk's still sitting there halfway through round two. I can't pass that up. So yeah. I'll take that there. You know, dry side Kachuk is a one, two punch. Certainly not too shabby. Uh, trade Austin Matthews. He's on the end cap on the other side on the turn. So uh, he uh, gets Jack Hughes there. And that's a great pick uh, to close out round two. Probably should have gone a little higher there. And then he takes Darlene there. So just a really good performance there by trade Austin Matthews on that turn. Uh, we see uh, Robertson, Connor, Ovechkin, and Mika Zab- Zabanejad go. So now I am back on the clock. Here. Like, it's 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 great that people are getting better, but can we not? <laughs> I want, to see no- I want to see none of you in my draft boards. None of you. All right, I'm going to take Sam Reiner. I think, you know, third forward. I'm going to, I usually don't go three forwards to start, but they, they're paying him that in a way that he's going to have to produce again and get another 50 goal season. So uh, why not? I don't believe he, I could believe he could do it again there on Florida's top line uh, with Barkov. So I'm happy with my top three there. And there goes Connor Bedard. All right. End of round three. Not a bad place to get him. Finally comes my way. So I figured, why not? Chris on the clock now. I do like the Sam Reinhardt move. He gets Jake Gensel, who's going to be leaned on heavily to produce there in Tampa. Got to do yeah, it. Yeah, that's a big. It's going to be. Uh, and uh, Chris said Tampa's going to win the uh, division. So full circle right here. Uh, state of survival. There is goalies in this format, but one of the ESPN mock hacks, we'll call it, is that you can wait on goalies for whatever reason. They just don't, don't get taken early. And it believes uh, we got Aiden uh, from the uh, draft. He's here in the chat. Sorry, Chris. Had to grab a car. So there we go. He, oh. he apologizes. Stay, stay, you're paying attention, Aiden. Well done. Well done. 
I'm glad you're paying attention. And he takes the first goalie. And he takes the first goalie. Hobie's paying attention. He's not missing here. Uh, I mean, usually there's no school in summer, but we're providing uh, a schooling service here. You know, and Aiden's taking advantage. He's starting to snipe us uh, us in our draft. So Aiden's taking home a championship somewhere. It's not in my league, but it's somewhere else. That's for sure. And back on the clock here after uh, two back-to-back goalies. So, uh, again, again, a nice turn there. Marner, Shesterkin uh, for Aiden. And then Connor Hellebuck there. He's got, uh, you know, listen, the top two goalies off the board on back-to-back picks. There goes Carter Verhage and John Tavares. And I'm back on the clock here. What do I want to do? That's a good question. What do I want to do? Uh, do I go goalie? I mean, I'm going to go. I, I got to go defense here. I'm going to go Evan Bouchard. No disrespect to Noah Dobson, but I know the, you know, Evan Bouchard just by being with McDavid is just going to get a ton of points where we'll see if the, how the Islanders offense flows. So I, I get my first defenseman there, power play specialist and Evan Bouchard as well. Phil Forsberg goes, Jack Eichel, Dylan Larkin, Chris Kyder on the auto pick. Quinn Hughes, there he goes. So that's a, you know, that's a mistake by me in ESPN rankings. I should have taken Quinn Hughes, but hey, live and learn. Why you got to be? It's why it's important to know who's out there. And I'm back on the clock here. My go goaltender. What do we got here? All right, I'm gonna get my first goalie out of the way here because I don't like what's happening. I don't like that. Uh, I'll take Vasilevsky. Why not? We know he's gonna get the lion's share of the workload. Or at least I have my first goalie uh, locked in. And Anthony's back on the clock here. And Wyatt Johnston goes right before, so he gets sniped by the auto pick. Big time sniping right there. Yeah, I right. can see you line. I can see you lining up for it. You were like, "I got this." Yeah, man, big time sniping right there happening. Wyatt Johnson, oh, round man. five. Oh yeah, he's excited, and he gets a defenseman. You guys are, you guys are not missing today. So Yossi Hedman, his one-two punch on defense. J.T. Miller, Connor Bedard, Carter Verhage is his first three forwards. No goalies yet for Ant. Then we look at Chris's team, Kaprizov, Nylander, Gensel, Strunk, top three forwards. He takes Noah Dobson. If I'm not going to grab him, he does. Takes Connor Hellebuck there. We'll see who, uh, who Chris makes on his pick on the other way. Adam Fox, another defenseman I probably could have gone with over Evan Bouchard. But, uh, you know, Aiden's just killing it right now. Uh, let's take a look oh, at Aiden's team. Me. Arner, Tage Thompson, Elias Pettersson. He's got his car and Fox is a one-two punch on a blue line. That should be illegal. And then uh, Igor Shesterkin <laughs> in the net. Chris kicking it down here for the final wow, second. Kicking it down to the final seconds. Dougie yeah, Hamilton. There he goes. We got a, I, the run I, the I wanted. Goal. I wanted Adam Fox there. That was that was the guy. I gotta. I gotta start taking the guy I want the most first. <laughs> I mean, listen. If there's a defenseman you want, rest assured, Aiden's gonna take him. Right Aiden's got it. He's there. got. He's got. He's got the page open. You got to take him on before you, you got to reach me. I know. I know. I was like, ah, oh, let me. I did. I didn't think Dobson was going to turn, though. So, Fine. all right. I, I, I'll grab. Uh, uh, I, I don't like what I've got here in terms of. Uh, I'm going to grab Sebastian. Yeah. I hope. This, Why this not? Is the, this is probably the first time I, I'm not feeling this team that I'm I, drafting. I'm actually okay with my team. I, I'm kind of mad that I took Bouchard before, you know, Quinn Hughes. That That's definitely a gaffe on my part. See what happens. We'll see how the team shakes out. Uh, last few picks that have gone off the board after I took Sebastian Ajo was Matt Boldy, Travis Konechny, Jordan Cairo, and Jonathan March. So an auto pick. Uh, trade Austin Matthews gets Barzal and Hints on the turn there. Two good picks. There goes Clayton Keller, a guy I was hoping to get uh, on the way back. Fortunately, it's not going to happen for me. Josh Morrissey would have been a nice one to get had I not gotten uh, Keller, and I'm not going to get him either. So here we go. Um, want to go to, you know, screw it. I'm going to reach a little bit here. If Brock Faber's worth eight and a half million, I'm taking him in round seven as my se- second defenseman. <laughs> Prove me wrong, Brock. Love it. There goes Mackenzie Wegar, which he's a very good defenseman. I just think Calgary is not going to get a ton of offense this year. Ant's on the clock here. We'll see what he takes. He gets Nico Hishier. He gets a little home cooking. He gets somebody he can root for. 
Now, Chris, uh, he makes his pick immediately. He grabs John Carlson, hoping he has a better year than last year, hopes that this year is the bounce back on a delay. Then Aiden, uh, you know, just grabbing Cole Caulfield. I mean, just, did, you do, did you do something to Aiden? I literally typed his name in in the search bar as that was happening. Did you, do, uh, did you like, I don't know, Aiden, identify yourself. Do you I'm live gonna, in, like, I'm Quebec gonna, or the Montreal I'm area? Gonna, I'm just going to take a goalie at this point. I haven't even looked. I mean, and Cider and Caulfield, I mean, he, he's going to have the best team when this is all said and done. Ant's back on the clock here. Chris, love the Ottinger pick there in round eight. That's part of the goalie hack Gotta here. Do it. And Ant takes exactly who I expected him to take there because I was taking him if you didn't as my second goalie. Gotta there get I am the out early in this, in this uh, little league we got going on right now. I don't want to have Stutzel and Kachuk on the same team. That's just like asking for it's asking for trouble. Yeah. All right. Let me go defense here. I don't love my you know what? Taking Jeremy Swayman. I know I could have waited on him, but in a real draft, you'd have to grab him probably. By I feel this like no. Like that. See, I was torn between the two, between uh, Swayman and uh, Soros, but. Since we had our little talk about the Atlantic Division odds and where we feel like the Boston Bruins are going to fit, I I kind of lean the other way. So that helped me out there a little bit. There goes Shifley, Horvat, Jesper Bratt. Now, trade Austin Matthews. I want to look at his team here because he's. Well, let me make my pick, and then we'll look at the uh, a guy that's on the other end of the draft here. Let's see who's on the. Oh, you know what? Timo Meyer, get in here. Why not? Well, he's going to have an even better year this year. Get get on my uh, forward squad. Let's take a look at Aiden's. Uh, let's look, take a look at trade Austin Matthews. Uh, obviously, first pick of the draft, Connor McDavid. Got to take him. Uh, Jack Hughes, Sasha Barkov, Barzal, Rupe Hintz, Bo Horvath. This guy believes in building through the forwards, that's for sure. But Darlene and Quinn Hughes is a one-two punch. You know, I said Makar Fox should be illegal. That should also be illegal as a top two right there. Uh, no goaltenders yet, so he's going to take advantage of the uh, goalie hack that uh, exists in ESPN mock formats. And now Aiden back on the clock. After So Chris gets Lafreniere. That's a guy he's been taking a ton. Doesn't want to wait for Aiden to maybe take him, so he gets him there. Miro Haskin in, uh, so Ant gets, what, his third defenseman spot filled up? Yes, he does. Aiden about to make his other pick. He grabs Bobrovsky. I think this is the last year you can really take Sergei Bobrovsky, and then it's going to be more of a transition, I think, next year. Brad Marchand and Bobrovsky, so there you go. And now Chris back on the clock. Let's take a look at his team and see if we can anticipate where he's going to go. He's got his goaltenders in Hellebuck and Ottinger. He's not going there. Does he go fourth defenseman? I think he's got to go forward here, get a little bit deeper there. Question is who? No, it's false. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a defenseman. I have, I have no exposure to him yet, so... Kind of excited to see how this goes. Brandon Montour. Very nice. Kind of excited to see how that goes. He's going to have the opportunities there in Seattle for sure. No one's challenging him for those top power play minutes. So, uh, I mean, Vince Dunn, but he ran it last year. But, I mean, you, you don't bring a guy, a guy like Montour, and, you know, he's probably going to – Vince Dunn probably goes down to the second power play. And it's got five seconds to make his pick here. See who he grabs. Brian Nugent Hopkins. So uh, there goes Tyler Toffoli. Probably a little bit early for him. Uh, let's see here. Charlie McAvoy still on the board. I'm not going to make the mistake I made last week and draft uh, Morgan Riley over McAvoy. Uh, so there we go. So uh, as a third defenseman, I'm very happy with that. Some picks going off the board here with the auto picks as well. We get to trade Austin Matthews, who uh, also has a pretty good team here. He's going to get his he's going to get his goaltender. and He's got Ilya Sorokin. So he waits and he gets rewarded. Good job there. And he takes Varlamov, so he's just going to take the Islanders goaltending and know he's got it locked up. I don't mind that. You probably could have waited on Varlamov, but I, I don't mind it if like you want to have that locked up and want that peace of mind. Yeah, the tandems always work. Trusting the New York Islanders goaltending, though, that's that's one way to live, homie. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I, there's a guy I want to take here, but I'm going to just upset Chris. I'm taking Slavkovsky. Got you. I see. I see what we're doing today. There was doing. another way. There was another way I could have gone there, but I mean, I think he's gonna have a huge year this year. 
I'm actually in a slow best ball draft, hoping that he comes to me with my next pick. So uh, we are in a round 12. We're about to be in round 12. We're about at the halfway point here of our third mock draft of the summer here on Total Hockey Now. Let's see. Luke Hughes goes there. Uh, Anthony gets uh, the second power play uh, point specialist there for the Devils. Pavel Buchnevich, somebody's got to put the puck in that. And I miss out on Miguel Sergachev two weeks in a row. Damn it, Aiden. You're only supposed to snipe Chris, not me. <laughs> and Hurdle. So that was the guy I was going to take if I didn't take Slavkovsky. So there you go. So Aiden, now I- I'm not a big fan of him. So. And it's back on the clock. Chris takes Zach Wierenski. Somebody's got to run the power play in Columbus. And, uh, you know, somebody's got to feed it to line. A. we, uh, we punt on, uh, the plus minus in this format. Thank God. Don't forget to draft Connor Bernard, uh, Bernard Adams cousin. Nice one. I like that. That, that was a good one. He went <laughs> three already, but you know what? Thank you for reminding me because I am going to take it's, it's that time in the draft. For oh, me it's to that take time. Macklin. That time. Macklin Celebrini, baby. So thank you for the reminder. State of survival. Round 12, why not? It's not a dynasty league. And there goes Mishkov. So he's going to, you know, trade Austin Matthews. Definitely uh, taking a, a shot there. And that's a good one in round 12. This is the time where you, you know, take your shots on guys you think that could potentially blow up. Seth Jarvis on the turn there. He's going to play on the top right wing spot for Carolina. I like that pick. I'm back on the clock. Wow. Look at that. Here I am. Even though everybody can see what I'm doing and looking at, that's fine. Looking for a fourth defenseman here. Eh, I don't love what's on the board. Certainly could go another forward here. I'm just getting tight. You're getting tight on time. Uh, uh, just like somebody else that like with Buchnevich has to produce in St. Louis, somebody's got to feed him the puck, and that'll be Robert Thomas. So I'll take that there. That's fair. That's very fair. Ants on the clock now. Brent Burns was a guy I was considering. Uh, auto pick grabs him after me. So at least tells me my head's in the right place. There goes Brady Shea. Dylan Cousins, good pick there. About to, uh, we're right in the middle of round 14 here. And there goes Sharang, uh, Sharon Govich to Aiden's awesome team. And Brock Besser, a guy that probably I shouldn't have waited on. Uh, still, there he is. So Aiden just kicking our asses up and down the block today. Brandon Hagel, Chris's guy. And according to Ant's reaction, not happy. Yeah, that, that was my go-to on the way back. So with that in mind, I'll just take Nikolai Ehlers. That's a, that's a good one, too. All right. I'm going to listen. I, I, you know, you say what you want about Morgan Riley. The guy gets assists, and he uh, is going to get power play time. So now you him. got both of them. So I got both. And as a fourth defenseman, I'm fine with Morgan Riley. That's unfortunate. That Joel Farabee pick is uh, not a great auto pick there. Somebody take Joe Pavelski. (laughs) There goes Arvidsson, who should see a bump in his production at Edmonton. And let's see what uh, trade Austin Matthews does here on the turn. And there there he is, Patrick Laine. I like that pick. Uh, that's That's a smart pick there. I'm back on the clock after Matt Roy, William Mecklen, Brian Rust go. Are there any forwards I really want right here? You know what? I'm going to bank on Elias Lindholm having a nice bump in production this year. If I talked him up earlier in the show and there's a reason why I think the Bruins could win the division, I got to take him. So there we go. He fills out my starting forward spots. Vander Kane goes on auto pick. There goes Logan Cooley, another guy I was considering. Uh, at least somebody uh, got him uh, uh, that's doing the autograph. And there goes Cray. He knew he couldn't wait on Jeff Skinner. for uh, Yeah, there you go. Good job. Couldn't wait anymore. I'm, t- I'm absolutely terrified of this turn now. So I got I to gotta sort out players before. I've got ideas of who I want here. Um, uh, but we'll see. I-, I still got a few picks to go. Aiden gets Vince done. Not a bad pick. And then Leo Carlson. So, I mean, they're going to be rel- playing him more minutes this year. Maybe a second-line center role. Maybe sees a little more offense as a result. 
see what happens there with Carlson as Chris is back on the clock. As we are right in the thick of round 16 of a 22-round draft, he's bouncing. He's, Chris is going to uh, take Jonathan Huberto. He somehow gravitates to me through no wants. He just He's kind of there. He's kind of like the McDonald's that's open at 2 a.m. Like You don't want to go to it, but everything else around is closed. So you just take it. Couple of the, and I, I think that's an adequate analogy. We've all been there. Uh, uh, I was going to ho- hopefully grab one of those defensemen, Hannafin or Harley, but I guess that's not going to happen. Um, I'm going to have to wait on defensemen now. Uh, I'm going to grab Ryan O'Reilly, just sitting out there. Going to be in that top six in Nashville that's expected to have a boost in offense. Why not? And now trade Austin Matthews back on the clock here. He's got some defensive spots to fill out. So could go defenseman here, but we'll see. And he does. He gets Philip Aronic. So he's got Quinn Hughes and he's got Philip Aronic. So he could just dress, dress that Canucks top pairing. There goes Gustav Forsling, uh, Sean Dursey. So yeah, defensemen are on the move here, which is going to kind of force my hand into that a little bit. I think you, you don't trade and acquire Jacob Trickman if you don't plan on giving him chances to produce. I, mean, I know John Carlson's there, but I'll, I'll take a chance on him having a resurgence in the nation's capital. And as my fourth defenseman. Or fifth defenseman, I should say. Ant back on the clock. Let's take a look at his team here as we approach the top of the hour. He's got his defense all filled up there. In fact, uh, it's, that's going to take one of his utility spots. Uh, but, hey, got to go deep on the blue line. He gets a uh, wild bill. William Carlson from Vegas there going to be leaned on the, you know, produce, you know, with uh, you know losing Chandler Stevenson. Maybe he moves up. I mean, they got Hurdle. They got Eichel. But, you know, they might still lean on him a little bit more offensively. There goes Flip Gustafsson. Uh, let's see if he has a bounce back this year. Maybe we were a year early on him last year. Matty Beniers, Aiden again. You know, that's my guy. I always get Matty Beniers at the stage of the draft. And Quentin Byfield. I like that. You know, that Byfield could uh, take that next step this year. Uh, I see this guy keeps falling down the leaderboard, like down the board. I don't know what's like, I don't know what happened. I don't know if he he accidentally died, but like, like if Shea Theodore stays healthy, I think he should be okay. And he's a potential trade chip if that a whole Marner to Vegas uh, deal is true. That's one of the pieces going back. So, uh, Shea Theodore, getting your, getting your defenseman there. Let's take a look at your roster as uh, Ant makes his pick on the right. So, yeah, that fills out. your That's your utility guy as well. Uh, pretty solid decor there with uh, Dobson, Hamilton, Carlson, Montour, Wierenski, and Shea Theodore. You got your three goalies locked up with Hellebuck, Ottinger, and Gustafson. Uh, Ant grabs Kyle Palmieri, and there goes Charlie Coyle. How is Stu Skinner still out there? I'll take my third goalie there. Auto pick does it doing its thing here with the five to one block as uh, trade Austin Matthews on the clock there. So Vasilevsky, Swayman, Skinner. I love my three way, uh, three headed monster there for goaltending. That's a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good tandem. That like three Trio. man stack there. Yeah. There goes Linus Olmark. Uh, let's see here. I'm back on the clock. I need to get at least one more defenseman and a couple of forwards. I'm done at the goaltender spot, at least for now. So it's getting thin at forward. Probably getting even thinner at the def- defense. Let's see. No, I'm going to go forward here. I'm going to just wait on defense. I mean, Sean Monahan. So, yeah, again, I, I, if, with him and Gaudreau getting back together, that's got to be worth something. It's going to be worth utter this, disappointment. Thank this, you. This draft is full of snipes and also uh, very, very smart players. So I'm going to jump the gun on this one and get Jacob Markstrom right now. But there you go. I mean, a guy that still can't believe he's still out there at this stage in the draft, but that's how the ESPN drafts go. So Demko, Saros, Markstrom, certainly uh, quite the uh, trio as well. And with Demko's injury history, you know you still got a solid you know, Saros, Markstrom punch there. So yeah. good stuff. Chris back on the clock here. Aiden on his turn gets Drew and Aiden Hill. 
Pierre Luc Dubois. There he is. Still trying to figure out what the Washington Capitals are doing, but they're gonna, I guess they're doing something. <laughs> hmm. Why not? Why not? Right. You know, at That's this stage, attitude. at this stage of the draft, again, it's time to take shots. Yeah, Philip Kurashev, Chicago. Zach Benson, also not a bad one there. Logan Couture, that's a wasted pick. I don't even know how much he plays this year. Travis Sanheim, a couple of defensemen go with trade Austin Matthews back on the clock here. And he might be making his, he's making two of his last three picks here. So let's see what direction he heads in as we uh, close out round 20 and go into round 21. He gets Johnny Gaudreau. So uh, him and Johnny I, are, uh, there we go. He, him and I are hoping that uh, we uh, have a nice uh, pairing there between those two and they both produce. Tevu Teravine and great pick a guy I was usually trying to grab at this late stage in the draft. Who's taking Brian Elliott? Got to take him, man. Who knows? You know, would it be crazy if I think that there might be, uh, even at this stage in his career, Aaron Eckblad could have a slight increase in his production with uh, Brandon Montour out of there? I'll take a stab on him. I don't love that pick, but defensemen are getting thin. There goes Mark Stone. Mark Andre Fleury. I got these guys lined up. Jake DeBrusque. Right. I, yeah. yeah. I know. Someone's got to do it's like someone's got to do something. Zegers. Yeah, I mean, this is the stage of the draft where you guess you could pull Perfetti. Oh, a good pick there. I'll round it out with the defenseman. Probably could have taken power over Ekblad, but you know. Didn't happen like that. You know what I mean? Did not happen like that. It didn't happen. I don't love my defense. That is somewhere where I feel like I kind of could have done better. There's the annual, the uh, weekly Craig Anderson pick. Um, my last pick in the draft here, uh, Luke Evangelista, hopefully will be the beneficiary of a uh, Steven Stamkos being a line mate, maybe even March or so. I'll grab with, uh, take my shot with him at la the last forward spot with him. I'll say Doris this. Uh, uh, Aiden came, saw, and he had no mercy on our souls. Yeah. yeah, you know, let's, uh, we're going to get Aiden's team up on here quick before we lose it. Yeah, and there you go. I don't, well, let's get my team out of the way first so I don't have to X off the screen, and then I can we can look at Aiden in a minute. Dreisaitl, Kachuk, Reinhardt, certainly love those first three there. Uh, Bouchard, I probably should have gone Quinn Hughes there. That was a you know mistake on my part. Don't mind Vasilevsky there because we know he's going to get the workload. Aho, sixth round is great. Faber, talked about him. I, you know, if you get eight and a half million, I'm fine with you being a second defenseman in this format, and he's going to be leaned on heavily, get a ton of minutes. Love Timo Meyer there. Uh, you know, got to get Celebrini. McAvoy's a third defenseman. And, you know, the bottom part of my roster, I think, is pretty strong here. I think I'll be okay. Took a couple of shots there with Monahan and Kurashev and Evangelista. But those are also guys that I can potentially drop if they get off the slow starts and, you know, I want to, you know, jump on someone else. So. I'm I'm okay with that team. I've done ha better, but I'm okay with that. Uh, looking at Aiden's awesome team here, as you can see on the right, Elias Pettersson, Mitch Marner, Tage Thompson, Cole Caulfield, Brad Marchand, Thomas Hurdle, Igor Sharangovich, uh, Sharangovich, but maybe I'll say that right one day, Brock Besser, Leo Carlson, Cal McCarr, Adam Fox, Maritz Sider, Mikhail Sergachev, Vince Dunn. Woo, that's a blue line. Uh, Matty Beniers, Igor Shosturkin, Sergey Bobrovsky, and then on the bench, Byfield, Drewan, Aiden Hill, Zegres, Cole Perfetti. Wow. Great job there, Aiden. Pretty yeah. Good. That is that's a, a really solid. Good that's a very solid defense core. Forward's got a lot of upside there. Um, you know, it's good to have Trevor Zegras, Cole Perfetti. I hope Cole Perfetti finds a new home. Somebody give that man, like, free Cole Perfetti. Let him have an opportunity to play. But that is a very, that is a very solid team that will never come to fruition, unfortunately. It's sad. That's a good trade off. He might win. Uh, Mock drafter of the year at the end of the season. Could at this Could. stage, he, he probably has had the best performance. So kudos to Aiden. We're gonna trade it Austin Matthews team. You got McDavid, Hughes, Barkov, Barzal, Hintz, Horvat, Shifley, Mishkov, Jarvis. That is a that's a punch at forward right there. It's a lot of upside there. Darlene, Hughes, Heronic, Forsling, Shabbat. Strong at the top, maybe a little weak on the back end, but um, he definitely makes up for it with the strong forward core there. He's got the Islanders goaltenders, and he knows he's got them locked up and just going to play them. 
Uh, Line A, certainly a good guy to take a shot on, and Arvidsson as well. Bilardi, Gaudreau, Tara Vine, and Matthew Ease. Strong team there for uh, Aiden. Now, I'll take my team off the screen. You guys can uh, throw yours up when you're ready. Ant, why don't you go first? Let's talk about your squad. Very on po, by the way, for Trey Dawson Matthews to be absolutely top heavy on defense and then just fade out as you go down. That is that is on point there. Top heavy and then just fade as we go along. There. Yeah. So, I, I honestly I don't really know how I feel about this draft. We'll help I you. Just, yeah. I mean, going in that eighth, you know, that seven eighth spot is a tough situation because now you're out of the top players that have been drafted and you start thinking, should I go defense first? Should I go goalie first? And obviously I went Roman Yossi and went defense first, went to JT Miller, who I like, uh, pulled a page out of the Adam Bernard book and took the uh, Connor Bedard, who's been mostly going third round, uh, fourth round in the, these mock drafts that we've been doing. So that's something to keep an eye out on. Uh, then when Ver- Verhage, uh Hedman took my first goalie in Demko, hoping that he one stays healthy and two Vancouver replicates what they did last season, which would be uh, you know a big feat for them. And I think we talked about it last year. I had them, you know, winning the division uh, in those odds. And when I got to go, with Mike Boy Nico, the captain, uh, UC Soros. Since everyone was taking goalies at that point in time, I said, let me lock up my two. Uh, Mir His- Heskinen for defense, Nugent Hopkins, Luke Hughes, uh, who I am going to depend on for some offense as well. Svetnikov, uh, Skage, or Shea, right? It's Brady, yeah, Shea. Brady Shea. So, I always want to say Skage, but uh, Brady Shea. Uh, uh, Ehlers, Cooley. Cooley, I, I kind of like the Cooley draft pick there. Yeah. Uh, Hannafin, I did Vegas double there. Hannafin Carlson. Paul Mary is one that I'm like, I think I I pulled the trigger as the time ran out, and I was just like, oh, all right, Cal Palmieri, because I don't really know how this offense is going to be for the Islanders. I don't, they haven't improved, and it's you know Teflon there, Teflon Lou in charge there. Uh, then I got Jacob Markstrom because I just didn't know uh, the way this draft was going to end up, and he's there. Duchesne I like uh, Stone, and I, I like the ending. I like I like my last four draft picks. I mean Stone. Team. Yeah, as long as he's playing for you during the fantasy playoffs, you know he's going to produce down the stretch for you. Yeah, and you know, when you when you get him to be a part of the bench, I think it's all good. Obviously, you're going to play him as much as you can when he is playing because he's really good. But once you know he gets hurt, you just stash him on the bench, and I think everything else is fine after that. I think you got a balanced team there for sure. I like my team better than your team, but I think you got a balanced team there. Yeah, you, and, you guys uh, are making me feel a little bit better now. All right. And then we got Chris's team here. Now, before we get Chris's team, we got Aiden in the chat again. I've been watching you guys since last year, and because of it, I ended up winning my league. You guys are definitely my favorite channel to watch, and I look forward to the mock drafts every week. Well, we look Cut forward this. to it as well. And Cut we this lo- clip. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, thank you for letting us know that we helped you win your league. That's kind of what we're here to do. Uh, we like to win our leagues too, but if it's somebody's going to win a league because of what we're, we're doing, that's almost as good or just as good in my book. So, Aiden, thank you for tuning in every week. Thank you for watching. We appreciate that. And just to let, if you want to take a page out of Aiden's book, rate, review, subscribe, YouTube, follow on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, Facebook. It's Total Hockey Now across the board on all of them. So Good for uh, good for Aiden for winning your pool. I, I can see how you did that. Uh, looking forward to you being here next week. I will be drafting ahead of you for sure. Um, can I just say, he, like... Uh, like I'm like very happy about this now. Like I feel so proud that we helped somebody win. I feel like very, very we feel proud. like our child's growing up. Like we're yeah. seeing them succeed at graduation. Or like we well, did it. There we go. <laughs> the proud papa moment. And uh, <laughs> listen, you know, it, it, like we, if Aiden, we can't thank you enough for tuning in and love you being part of the THN family. Yeah. So uh, we, we'll we'll have mock drafts throughout the summer. We do our odds. We do a lot. State of survival. Another guy that checks in every week too. So love you guys. Uh, but without further ado, Chris, why don't we uh, recap your team and uh, bid everybody farewell for this week's edition of uh, Total Hockey Now? So I tried to stay with what I what I know is successful. Uh, unfortunately, I got half the puzzle. I got Kirill Kaprasov. I did not get Kale McCarr, so I went with William Nylander, which I think is fine. William Nylander is going to get his chances. Jake Gensel, obviously, I'm I'm all out here for goals and scoring and points. Connor Hellebuck just feels like the thing to do. 
Noah Dobson is fine. Dougie Hamilton is fine. Jerome Carlson is fine. I didn't want to go three defensemen there, but I felt like I needed to since I didn't have the players that I wanted to get. The top big three defensemen in my mind were already gone, so I had to lock up somebody somebody else. Nothing wrong there with Jake Ottinger, though, coming to complete it. I like to get my goaltending out early. If you know me, we, we try to settle that up and then move out of there. Alexi Lafreniere, I don't think enough people are talking about him. He's probably going to be on the Rangers top line. Rangers are still very, very good. I'm hoping he'll see some power play time. That'd be kind of fun. So we can bump those numbers up. Brandon Montour, somebody in Seattle. Like I said, I had no exposure to him, but I don't necessarily hate him. I just, I don't know what I'm getting out of Seattle and I don't really enjoy like Seattle's hockey team really in terms of fantasy. So I'm hoping that'll change here. Pavel Buchnevich, of course, consistent. Zach Wierenski, we know what we're getting out of him. Uh, Dylan Cousins, we're hoping for a back back, you know, bounce back here. Here, Cousins. Tage Thompson leads the way. Dylan Cousins slots into the number two spot. Nobody's really challenging him for that. Brandon Hagel just kind of sticks around quietly. Yep. He's going to pick up like 60 points and nobody's going to know how he did it. Jeff Skinner, he's not going to Edmonton for fun. He's going there to do something. Just lack of power play time is going to hurt, but maybe if he plays with McDavid, we could all forget that. Jonathan Huberto, just because I enjoy pain. Philip Gustafson is the starter in Minnesota, and I feel like Minnesota again. Like I talked, we talked about them defensively, but like they started off miserably last year. So maybe if they don't start off as bad, Philip Gustafson has better numbers. Shea Theodore is just there kind of what it is. Dylan Gunther, Utah is going to be rolling out, I think, some players. And I think Dylan Gunther can can benefit from that. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, again, same thing like Huberto. I like Payne. Jake DeBrusque, he's in Vancouver because Vancouver wants to add more offense. I think that is perfectly fine. He's going to play a top six role. Love it. Owen Powers is kind of my my dart here. I I think he can take a step. I hope he does. Maybe Buffalo goes back to using two defensemen on the top power play unit, which I don't think is terrible. But this is the point where you kind of see these players break out a little bit defensively. We saw it with Hedman. We saw it with Darlene. You know, the third year kind of where we start to take off. Look, as my last pick in a 22-round 10-team league, I will take my chances with him. Interesting that you took Huberdo and then his twin brother and Pierre-Luc Dubois. Look, I, 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 at this point, like I, I had both those players last year, and I'm not gonna lie, it was maximum pain. I did not do well in that league. So I you're ready for more. I am, but now at least my expectations have changed because now I'm not expecting them to do anything. Now yeah. I just, just, just exist, right? I, 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 can't, as, I, I can't rip on you too much since you whooped our behinds in fantasy uh, Latin those two leagues last year. You I just leagues. don't. I just don't want to have to rely on Jonathan Huberto and Pierre Luc Dubois every night. I just want them to be fair. Like if they can stay off the third line, that'd be great. That's I think that's a reasonable it. expectation for both of them. Just stay in the top six. If you can do that, and obviously where you draft them, obviously the value there makes a difference. But towards the end of a draft, I, I absolutely take a shot on those guys because. If you know, this is the last year to take a shot on those two guys you just mentioned specifically. Yes. If they can't figure it out now, forget it. And they're coming off your bench. So, I mean, yeah. they're not like it's not like your fourth or fifth pick. Like, like I was pained with with Huberto a couple of years ago. Sure. Yeah, we were, I, I had a league where Huberto just killed. I mean, I, I, there should be a support group for people that had Jonathan Huberto in the 2023-24 season. There should be a support group. But, but there's not. Maybe we'll make it here. We'll see.